we have a crisis in the world, tremendous crisis, and also crisis in our consciousness, in us. I see the urgency of change, radical revolution, mutation in the mind. I see it. It is necessary. There is complete quietness of the mind, and that which is silent has vast space. Only then that which is nameless comes into being. This is Urgency of Change, the Krishnamurti podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 17 of Urgency of Change. This week's and next week's episodes are Krishnamurti in conversation with Alain Nordet. This week's dialogue is titled The Circus of Man's Struggle. This is a podcast from Krishnamurti Foundation Trust based in Hampshire, UK. For more information about activities and programs at Brockwood Park, such as the Krishnamurti Retreat Centre, Brockwood Park School, and more about the Foundation, please visit our website at kfoundation.org. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at Krishnamurti Foundation Trust. Alain Nordet was Krishnamurti's private secretary in the 1960s. He met Krishnamurti in 1963 whilst a music lecturer at Pretoria University, and he was a professional concert pianist. He gave up his teaching and performing in 1964 to work with Krishnamurti full-time. Fluent in several languages, he was very helpful at international gatherings and in attracting younger audiences for Krishnamurti's talks at a time of cultural change in the West. This conversation with Krishnamurti was recorded in Malibu, California in 1972. It begins by asking, Why do we divide the world as a human being and the divine? When I realise that my consciousness is the consciousness of the world, and the consciousness of the world is me, whatever change takes place in me affects the whole of consciousness. Can human consciousness undergo a radical change? To find out if there is something beyond this consciousness, I must understand the content of consciousness. The mind must go beyond itself. If there is no thought, there is no thinker. If the observer is the observed, what is the nature of change in consciousness? Radical revolution in consciousness takes place when there is no conflict at all. Sir, you speak about the whole of life. It seems that... It seems that people are so confused. When we look about us, there's so much disorder everywhere. First of all, in the world, we see that there are wars, we see ecological disorder, we see political disorder, we see social disorder and crime and all the evils of industrialization and overpopulation. And it seems that the more people try to solve these problems, the more they augment. And then there is this other entity, man himself, who also is full of problems. He has the problems of the world about him, and at the same time, he's full of problems inwardly. He has loneliness, he has despair, he has jealousy, he has anger, and all this we may call confusion. And presently, he dies. And then we've always been told that there is yet something else which has variously been called God, eternity, creation. And about this man knows nothing. He's tried to live for this. He's tried to live in relation to this. But this again has made problems. It seems, sir, from what you have said so many times, that one must find a way of dealing with these three problems, these three entities, at the same time. Because these, the problems within these three entities are the problems confronting man. And this, sir, is what you speak about. 
Is there a way to ask the question properly so that it will answer these three sets of problems at the same time? First of all, sir, for me ask, why do we divide the world, the human being and the divine? Why is there this division? Or is it only one movement which must be taken on the ra- uh, which must be taken on the ra- on the m- wave itself and so first let's find out why we have divided the world this whole existence as the world outside of me the world inside of me and the, and something beyond me yes sir. is it that this division exists because of of the chaos outwardly and so we are only concerned with the chaos of, of the outer chaos and totally neglect the inner chaos and not finding an, uh, a solution for the outer or for the inner, then try to find a solution or a concept, a belief in the Divine. Yes, yes, sir. So, I think we ought to, if I may suggest, in asking a question of this kind, are we dealing the three things separately or as a total movement, as a unitary movement? Yes, yes. How can we make them into a unitary movement, sir? How are they related? With what kind of life, with what kind, what is the action in man? I wouldn't Which come to that yet. I wouldn't same. come to that yet. Yes, sir. Yes. I would ask if I why have why has man divided the world, divided his whole existence mm. <coughs> into these three categories? Yes. Yes, sir. Why? From there yes. move. Yes, that's right, sir. Yes. Now why have I, as a human being, divided the world outside of me, the world inside of me, and the world which I am trying to grasp, of which I know nothing, of which I hope, of which I have, I give all my, yes, yes, my yes. despairing hope and yes, so. Yes, that's right. Sir. Now, why do I do this? Is it, sir, tentatively we are saying, yes, yes. is it that we have not been able to solve the outer existence mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. with its chaos, confusion, uh, destruction, brutality, violence and all the horrors that are going on, therefore we turn to the inner mm-hmm. and hope thereby to solve the outer yes. and not being able to solve the inner chaos, inner destruction, the inner insufficiency, the inner brutality, violence and all the rest of it and not being able to solve anything there either, then we move away from both the outer and the inner to some other dimension. Yes, it is like that, sir. That's what we do. This is what what is happening all the time around yes, us yes, sir. and in us. Yes, sir. There are the problems outside, which engender the problems inside. Not being able to deal with either or both, we create the hope of some other, some third state, oh, which we call God. Yeah, an outside agency. An outside agency, which will be the consolation, 
the final, um, the final yes. solution. solution. One sees this. Yes. Mm? The more one is aware of mm. all this phenomenon that's going yes. on, one is aware of these three movements. Yes, but it is a fact also, sir, that there are things which are really outer problems. The roof leaks, the sky is full of is full of pollution. Pollution. The, the, the rivers are drying up. There are such problems and wars. Wars can also be, they are visible outer problems and there are problems which we think to be inner problems. Our secret and closed longings, fears and <coughs> worries. Yes, sir, but... There, are, is there is the world and there is man's reaction to it, man's living in it. And no. And so there are these two entities, at least in a practical sort of way we can say there are. And so probably trying to solve practical entities overflows into the inner state of man and engenders problems there. So that means we are still keeping the outer, the inner, as two separate movements. Yes, sir. We mm -hmm. are. We do. And I, I feel that's a totally wrong approach. Yes. Mm. The roof does leak, mm -hmm. and the the world is overpopulated. There is pollution. There is there are wars. There are every kind of mischief is going on. And not being able to solve that, we turn inward, and not being able to solve the inward issues, we turn to something outer still further away from all this. Yes, sir. Whereas if we could treat the whole of this existence as one unitary movement, hmm, yes. then perhaps we would be able to solve all these problems most intelligently and reasonably and in order. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It no. seems that's what you speak about, sir. Yes. Would you mind telling us how these three problems are really one one thing? I am coming to that, sir. I am coming to that. That is, the world outside of me is created by me. Not the tree, not the, no, no. Not the uh, clouds not the and existence. the seas and the beauty of the landscape, but the, the human existence in relationship, yes. which is called society, yes. that is created by you and by me. Yes. So the world is me and me is the world. Yes, sir. I think that's the first thing that must be established, not as an intellectual uh, or an abstract fact, but an in actual feeling, yes. in actual an actual realization, yes. this yes. fact, not a supposition, not a not a intellectual concept, yes. but as a fact that the world is me, and I am the world. The world is being the society in which I live, the society with its culture, morality, social inequality, all the chaos that's going on in society, is myself in action. Yes, sir. And the culture is what I have created in which I am caught. Yes. I think that is irrevocable and absolute fact. Yes, sir. Yes. How is it that people don't see this enough, sir? We have politicians, we have ecologists, we have economists, we have we have soldiers, all trying to solve the problems outside, simply as outer problems. Because um, probably the lack of right kind of education, mm. uh, the specialization, yes. the desire to conquer the outer, go to the moon and play golf there, <laughs> and so on, so on. We always want to alter the outer, hoping thereby to change the inner. Yes, sir. Create the right environment, which the communists have said hundreds of times, yes. then the human mind will change according to that. <laughs> that is what they say, sir. Yeah. 
That is what everybody seems what, to have believed. More or less what everybody says. In fact, every great university, with all its departments, with all its specialists, one could almost say that even these great universities are founded and built on the belief that Change the, the world can be changed by a certain amount of specialized knowledge in different departments. Yes, sir. The, I think we miss this basic thing, which is yes, the world is me and the world yes, is... Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. The, I am the world. I yes, think sir. that feeling, not an I, as an idea, that feeling mm. d brings a totally different way of looking at this whole problem. Yes, sir. Now, if... Yes, it's an enormous revolution. Already to see the problem as one problem, as the problem of man and not the problem of his environment, this is an enormous step, which, is the which people will not take. And people may not won't take, take anything, step, sir. Yes, I mean, yes. anything intelligent they reject, because yes. they're used to this... Uh, outward organization and the and disregard totally what's happening inwardly yes so if one real when one realizes that the world is me and i am the world then my action is not separative yes sir yes. is not the individual opposed to the community or the importance of the individual and his salvation but the the I think this is important to understand, which is when one realizes that the world is me and I am the world, and whatever action takes place whatever change takes place will change the whole of consciousness of man. I Am I yes, sir. Would you like to explain you see, that? You sir? see what I mean, sir? Yes, sir. I, as a human being, realize that the world is me and I am the world. Realize, yes, feel, yes, yes, deeply be committed. Yes, sir. Deeply f be passionately aware of this fact. Yes, sir. That my action is in fact the world. The world. My behavior is the only world there is. There I, uh, because the, the events in the world are, are behavior. Quite. And behavior is the in, inner. So no. the inner and the outer are one. Yes, sir. Because the events of history, the events of life, life itself, is in fact this point of contact between the inner and the outer. It is in fact behavior of man. Yes. So yes, to, be, to understand you, yeah, that I, is... Perfectly, sir. So... The, the consciousness of the world yes, sir. is my consciousness. Fantastic, sir. Yes, yes. My yes. consciousness is the world. Yes, yes. Now, the crisis is in this consciousness, not in organization. Yes, sir. Yes. Not in bettering the roads, bettering the tearing down the hills to build more houses. Bigger tanks. Bigger tanks, bigger wars. Intercontinental yeah. missiles. So, hmm. I, my consciousness is the world, and the consciousness of the world is me. Yes. When there is change in this consciousness, yes. It affects the whole consciousness of the world. Yes, sir. I don't know if... Yes, I think sir, this, this is, is also... This is extraordinary to say, sir. It's an extraordinary thing. No, this thing. is a fact, sir. So that, in fact, it is consciousness that is in disorder. There is no disorder anywhere else. Ob consciousness obviously. is in disorder. That's right. Therefore, the ills of the world are the ills of human consciousness. That's right. And the ills of human consciousness are my ills. That's right. Is my so, malady, my that's right. so disorder. When I realize that my consciousness is the consciousness of the world, and the consciousness of the world is me, yes. whatever change that takes place in me, affects the whole of consciousness. Yes, sir. To this, sir, people always say, ah, that's very well, but I may change and there will still be a war in Indochina, I don't know. there will still be pollution... Wait, wait, wait sir, wait, sir, quite right, and there will be. And ghettos, 
There will be. And but overpopulation. Of course there will be. But if each one of us mm. Mm. saw the truth of this, that the consciousness of the world is mine and mine is the world, yes. and if each one of us felt the responsibility of that, yes, sir. Yes, sir. the politician, the scientist, the yes, engineer, yes. the <coughs> bureaucrat, the businessman, if everybody felt this, mm. and it's our job to make them feel this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And that is the function of the religious man, surely. Yes, sir. So, this is an enormous thing you've said, sir. So, I wait. Yes. Let me go. Hmm? So, then it is one movement. It is not an individual movement and his salvation. Hmm? That's right. It is the move. It is the salvation, or if you like to use that word, of the whole of man's consciousness. The wholeness and the health and the holiness of consciousness, consciousness. itself, that. which is one thing, and in which is contained what appears to be the outer and what appears to be the inner. That's right. That's right. Now let's keep to that one point. Yes, sir. So, so what you are speaking about is in fact that health, that sanity, and that wholeness of this consciousness, which always has been, in fact, an indivisible entity. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Now, when the educator, the people who organize things, when the writers, when the people who want to do, create a different kind of world yes. than what it is now, if they realize it is their responsibility, yes, then the whole of consciousness of man begins to change, yes, which is what is happening in another direction. When they are emphasizing Division. Organization, division, then they are doing exactly the same thing. In a negative way. Neg in a destructive way. Yes. So, the ne from that, the question arises can this human consciousness, which is me, yes. which is the community, yes. which is the society, yes, yes. which is the culture, yes, yes. which is all the horrors that pro are, are produced by me? in the context of the society, yes. in the culture, which is me. Yes. Now, can this consciousness undergo a radical change? That is the question. Yes, sir. Not mm. escape into the supposed divine. That's right, sir. Not escape, because when we understand this change in consciousness, the other, the divine is there, you don't have to seek it. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. You have told us this, sir. Yes. Would you like, would you, would you please explain, sir, what this change in consciousness consists of? That's what we're going to now. Yes, sir. And then perhaps we can ask about the divine, if it arises. It, uh, First of all, sir, is there any possibility of change in consciousness? Huh? Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, sir. Or any change made consciously is no change at all. Yes, sir. I don't know. Um, I want to get at this a little slow. Would you stop a minute? When we talk about change in consciousness. It implies changing from this to that. Yes, sir. And both this and that are within the consciousness. Within con That's yes. what I want to establish first. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That when we say there must be a change in consciousness, yes, sir. It is from. It is still within the field of consciousness. The way we see the trouble and the way we see the, the solution, which we call change. Change. All is that is all within the same 
area. Yes. And therefore, no change at all. Yes, sir. I don't. Know. Yes, this is. Yes, sir. That is, the content of consciousness mm -hmm. is consciousness, mm -hmm. and the two are not separate. Yes. Let's be clear yes. on that yes. point too, which is consciousness is made up of all the things that have been collected by man mm. as experience, as knowledge, as misery, confusion, um, destruction, while all that is consciousness. Plus so-called solutions. Yeah, and in that consciousness, God, no God, um, various theories about God, all that is consciousness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When we talk about change in consciousness, we are still changing the pieces from one corner to the other. Yes, sir. Moving one quality into another corner of the field. Yes, juggling with the contents of this huge box. Yeah, that's right. Juggling with the contents. Yes. And we're therefore, changing the, we're changing. We're changing variables in the same set of things. That's right. So we, you, you have put it perfect, better than I have put it. That is juggling. When we talk about changing, we are really thinking of juggling the contents. Yes. Juggling with the contents. Yes. Right. Now that implies a juggler. Mm -hmm. And the thing with which he is juggling. Yes, sir. Yes. But it is still within the uh, field of consciousness. Are you saying, sir? Are you saying there are two questions which arise, sir? If I may Go interrupt on, sir. you, are you saying that there is no consciousness at all outside of the content of consciousness? And are you saying, secondly, sir, that there is no entity at all to juggle? There is no entity called me outside of this content of consciousness. Obviously not. But these are two enormous statements, sir. Would you be kind enough what is the first to question, explain sir? them? The first thing you are saying, sir, if I have understood correctly, is that this consciousness which we are discussing and which is all we are and all we have and which we have seen is the problem itself. Mm -hmm. You are saying, sir, that this consciousness is its very content and that there is nothing to be called consciousness outside of the content of consciousness. Absolutely. Are you right. saying that outside right. of man's problems, outside of his misery, outside of his thinking, outside of the formulation of his mind, there is nothing at all we call consciousness? Absolutely. This right. is an enormous statement, sir. Would you explain this? Yes, sir. There's we all think, sir, that we, we all think and this has also been postulated by Indian religion since the beginning of time, that there is a super-consciousness outside of this shell, which is, they've called it ahamkara, which is the consciousness we're talking about. Sir, to find out if there is something beyond this consciousness, I must understand the content of this consciousness. Yes, sir. I must go, uh, the mind must go beyond itself. Yes, sir. Uh, then I will find out if there is something. Yes. One can then find out if there is something yes. other than this or not. Yes, but sir. to stipulate that there is has no meaning. It's yes, just sir. a speculation. Yes, sir. So are you saying, sir, that what we call consciousness commonly and what we are talking about is the very content of this consciousness. That's that container and contained are an indivisible thing. That's right. This is an enormous thing, sir. Yes. And then the second point you are making is that there is no entity to decide and will and juggle when the contents to be juggled are absent. Th uh, that's right. These are two Th enormous points, sir. That is, sir. We've come a long, long way, sir. That is, sir. I. My consciousness is the consciousness of the world. That's the first point, sir. And consciousness of the world is me. Yes. 
which is Same really point. a truth. You find it's not just yes. my invention or your acceptance of that. Invention. It is the an absolute truth. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the content of the consciousness is consciousness. Yes. yes. Without the content, without the content, there is no consciousness. Yes. 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 Now, when f- we yes. want to change the content, we are juggling with the. We are juggling. Yes. Hmm? Yes. But the, con- the it content it is juggling itself. Itself. Because you have made a third point that there is nobody outside of this content to do any juggling at all. At all. Quite right. So that so the juggler and the contents are one. Yes. Yeah. Juggler also and the. the, the Container and the contents are one. That's right. The thinker who says, within this consciousness, that he must change, is the consciousness is trying to change. Change. Yes. That's. I think that's fairly clear. And this also is the world he's trying to change. Yes. So that the world and the consciousness and the person, the entity, supposedly will change it, are all the same entity, exactly. masquerading as it were. As three Putting on masks, pretending to be three different entities. Right. This is if enormously that I- important. If sir. that is so, which is so, yes, sir, yes, sir. then what is a human being to do to bring about a, a total emptying of the content of consciousness, so that this particular consciousness, which is uh, the world is me, I know I am the world, with all its miseries. Conf- How is that to undergo complete change? Not within the consciousness. Yes, sir. How is the mind, which is consciousness, to bring it quicker yes, and yes, sir. more closer, yes, sir. the mind, which is consciousness, yes. With all its content, yes. how is that mind, which is time, which is mm, the all the accumulated knowledge of the past, and so on, so on? How is that mind to empty itself of all its so its content? Are you saying, sir? Have you moved now, sir, to the next step? Are you saying, sir, that because of what you have so clearly explained, the question now arising is? Whether this consciousness can empty itself, is that the, is that the real question the next now? Question. Having seen that the world and the consciousness and the individual are one entity, are you saying, sir, that the real question is the ending of this entity, the emptying of that consciousness? Is that what you are saying, sir? Yes, sir. Because people will say, people hearing what you have said a few times, thinking about it, understanding it imperfectly, they say, can that consciousness be emptied? And when that consciousness is emptied, supposing this were possible, doesn't that reduce one to a state of vegetable vagueness and inertia? This no, is the sir, question on the they contrary, ask. On the contrary, to, co- to have come to this point... Yes, sir. The point that we have come to requires a great deal of inquiry, a great deal of um, reason, logic, and it bring with it comes intelligence. Because some people may think, sir, that the empty consciousness which you speak about is something like that consciousness of the child at birth. Uh, is this what uh, no, you mean? No, sir. No, sir. Not at all. No. Not at all. No. Just let's go slowly at this. Step by step. Let's. I'd rather go step by step into this. Let's begin again. My consciousness is the consciousness of the world. Yes. The world is me, and the content of the my consciousness is the content of the world. And the content of consciousness is consciousness itself. Itself. That is me. Mm? And also, that is the entity who says he is conscious. Yes. Now all that, the organizations, the bureaucracies, the business, the whole of that is consciousness, of which I am a part. I can become a businessman, I can become a crook, I can become a, a saint, I can become a um, go to the moon. Uh, 
You follow? I am all that. Now, I am asking myself, realizing I am that, what what is change then? Yes, sir. Let's go slowly. Yes, Let's sir. go That's slowly. That's the question. Sir. What, what is, is change, change then? which will solve these three sets of problems that are really one? Yeah. Which what will is the what is implied by change? Yes, sir. What is implied by revolution? The f- not the physical revolution. We've gone beyond that. We've gone beyond that. Because a physical revolution is the most absurd, primitive, mm. um, unintelligent destruction. It's fragmentation yeah. in the consciousness. consciousness. Are you asking, sir, what is it which will restore order to this consciousness, an order which is whole? Are you saying, sir, Can there be order within this consciousness? Aren't you? Is that your is that the next step? Sir? That's what you're asking. Yes, sir. Aren't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, since we see that the disorder, which is the sorrow and the suffering, is the disorder in this indivisible consciousness. Right. The next question must be, what are we going to do about it? Yes. And is the, since there is no entity who can do something wait, about sir, it outside wait, sir, of this disorder? Wait, 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 wait! Don't, don't jump to that immediately. Because we've seen that the disorder is the entity. The but content. Do we realize that? No. Yes. Mm. Do I realize? The thinker is part of this consciousness, mm-hmm. and is not a separate entity outside this consciousness. Yes, sir. Do we realize that the observer, yes, seeing the content, yes, sir, examining, analyzing, looking yes, at it all, is the content itself? Yes, sir. The observer is the content. Yes, sir. Now, do this I realize says, that? Yes, we have realized, sir, that the world is human consciousness. <laughs> And you have told us that human consciousness is not separate from its contents. And you have also said, sir, that there is no observer, in fact, separate from this but content yes, of I, consciousness. Stating, wa- stating a truth is one thing, but the realization of it is another. That's right, sir. Now, I do think we do not fully understand that's it. That's what that I want. there is any observer, any entity, separate from... We do not understand that there is no entity separate from this thing we are trying to change. That's right. So, when we talk of change, it implies that there is an entity separate within the consciousness Yes. who can bring about a transformation. Yes, sir. We all think this. We think that we can somehow step aside from the mess, look at it, and again juggle with it. Yes. We always tell ourselves, well, I'm still here to do something about it. Yes. And so we juggle more and... More mess, more confusion. There's just a little change of decor and things get worse. So first is, sir... Would you let, explain... Sir, let's that begin this again. I want to yes. come begin again. Which is, the world is me, I am the world. The yes. consciousness of the world is my consciousness. My consciousness is the world. Yes, sir. In that consciousness are all the content of human endeavour, mischief, human misery, human uh, cruelty, all the human activities are within that consciousness. Yes. Within that consciousness, man has brought about this entity which says, I am separate from my consciousness. The observer there says, I am different from the thing observed. The thinker says, my thoughts are different from my me. Yes, he does. So, is that so first? Let's move step by step. Is that so? Or is it the thinker is the thought? We all believe, sir, that the two entities are different. We say to ourselves, I mustn't be angry, I mustn't be sorrowful, 
I Which must is, improve. Yes, self-improve. I must, I must change myself. We are saying this either tacitly or consciously all the time. Because we think there are these two separate are uh, separate. Yes. Sir. Now I'm we are point, trying to point out that they are not separate. Yes. Sir. That they are one. Because if there is no thought at all, there is no thinker. That's right, sir. If there is no um if the the thing observed, there is no observer. Yes, sir. So there is no, are you saying, sir, that there is no permanent entity such as an observer, there is only an observer with regard to each observation. There is only a thinker with regard to each thought. Wait, sir, in I'm the not, absence of the thought see, there is no thinker. Let's see if I'm thinker. understanding your question rightly. But there are a hundred observers and a hundred thinkers during the course of the day. Wait, I'm just saying, is that so? I observe that red eagle flying by, yes, going sir. by. Yes. Mm, I see it there. When I observe that bird, am I observing with the image I have about that bird, or am I merely observing, or is there is only mere observation? If there is an image, which is word, memory and all the rest mm. of it, then there is an observer watching the bird go by. Yes, sir. If there is only observation, yes. Then there is no observer. Yes. Hmm? Yes, sir. I don't know if you are saying that either I observe the bird with an image, in which case there is an observer, or I just look at the bird, in which case there is no observer. Uh, no observer at all. Would you explain, sir, why there is an observer when I look at the bird with an image? Because the observer is the past. Yes, sir. Mm. The observer is the sensor, yes, sir. is the accumulated knowledge, experience, um, memory. Mm. With that, mm. which is the observer, yes. he observes the world. Yes, sir. Which is, his accumulated knowledge is different from your accumulated knowledge. Yes, sir. Yes. In other words, he's observing himself. Himself. He's observing what he thinks, what he has been taught, and as he has been conditioned to observe. So? Yes, sir. In this case, of course, it's quite clear that the observer is observing only himself. We so see, for instance, that if there's a war on, and uh, if there is a war on, the Germans will look at a particular plane quite differently from the way the French will, yeah, if course. they're on opposite sides of the war. Therefore, what they're seeing is themselves. So, sir? When one realizes the observer, the experiencer, the thinker, is the thought, is the experience, is the observed, yes, sir. then the question is, how is, what is the meaning of change? Yes, sir. Are you saying, sir, that this total consciousness, which is the mess, is in fact the observer who is going to deal with it? And this would seem to bring us to a deadlock, because the thing trying, we're trying to change is the person trying to change it. And the question is, what then? That's just it, sir. If the observer is the observed, what is the nature of change hmm, what can be in done? consciousness? Yes, sir. That's what we're trying to find out. Yes, sir. That is, we realize that there must be a radical revolution. Not physical revolution, radical revolution in consciousness. In consciousness. Yes, sir. How, how is this to take place? Yes, is it to take place through the observer? And when the observer is separate from the observed, mm -hmm. then it, his change is merely juggling with, with the various contents of consciousness. That's right. Sir. Now, let's go slowly, slowly. When one realizes that, then the observer is the observed, the thinker is the thought. That's a fact. Mm. 
Hmm? Hmm. Right. Let's stop there a minute. Hmm. Well, are you saying, sir, that the thinker is the totality of all these thoughts which create the confusion? Thinker is, is the thought. Yes. Whether it is many or one or... Yes. Uh, but there is a difference, sir, because the thinker thinks of himself as some sort of crystallized, concrete entity, even through this discussion, the thinker sees himself as the concrete entity to whom all these thoughts, all this confusion but, sir, belongs. But that concrete entity, as you say, yes. is the result of thought. Yes, sir. Wait, yes, sir. Uh, the result of thought. Yes, that concrete entity is all Put together these thoughts by together, thought. all these thoughts together. Put together by thought. Yes. Hmm? Yes. <coughs> Put together by his thoughts. Of course, by and thought, he, yes. not his, by thought. Yes, sir. Hmm? And <coughs> thought sees that there must be a change yes, sir. and hopes this concrete entity, which is the result of his own of thought, he says that concrete entity hopes to change yes, the content itself. Yes. Hmm? yes. And so there is a battle between the observer mm. and the observed. Yes. The battle consists of trying to control, change, shape, uh, suppress, give it a new shape. All that. That yes, is the battle yes, that goes yes. on all the time in our yes, life. Yes. But when I see, when the mind understands the truth that the observer, the experiencer, the thinker mm. is the thought, is the experience, is the observed, yes. then what takes place? Knowing that there must be a radical change, there must, consciousness must undergo tremendous change. Mm. That's a fact. That's a fact. And when the observer who wants to change realizes he is part of the change. Yes. Hmm? Part of what has to be changed. What has to be changed. Yes. And therefore no change at all. Yes, that he is in fact like a thief pretending to be a policeman to catch himself. He himself. Yes. Right. So what takes place? You see, sir, people don't believe this because they will say, Ah, but through exercising will, I have stopped smoking. Through exercising will, I have got I up earlier, and I have lost weight, and I have learnt languages. They say, I am the master of my destiny, I can change. Everybody really believes this. Everybody will believe that he is capable, somehow, of exercising will upon his own life, his own behaviour and his own thinking. Which means, sir, one has to understand of course, the this whole, is the conflict you, you mentioned. Yes, oh, I understand. Oh, the, one has to understand the meaning of effort. Yes. Hmm? yes. What is effort? Why effort exists at all? Is that the way to bring about a, a transformation in consciousness or yes. transformation of consciousness yes. through effort, through will? Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which means what? Change through conflict. Yes. When there is the operation of will, will is a form of resistance yes. to overcome, to suppress, to yes. deny, yes. escape, all that's a form of will in action. Right. That means life then is a constant battle. Yes, sir. Are you saying that simply one element in this consciousness is dominating another? Obviously, one yes. fragment dominates the other fragment. And that there is still conflict and there is still disorder the, by that very fact? Yes. Yes, this is clear, sir. So, the central fact still remains, that is, there must be a radical transformation in consciousness and of consciousness. Yes, sir. Right? Yes. Uh, how is this to be brought about? That is the real question. Yes, sir. We have approached it by thinking that one fragment is superior 
to the rest of the other fragments within the field of consciousness. Indeed we have, sir. Now, that su- fragment which you call superior, intelligence, uh, intellect, Will. reason, logic, etc., etc., is the product of the past. Of the past, of the many other fragments. One fragment has assumed authority over other fragments. Yes, this is clear. Sir. But it is still a fragment. Yes, sir. And therefore, there is a battle between between one fragment and the many other fragments. Yes, sir. So, is it possible to to see if this fragmentation doesn't solve our problems? That's clear, sir. Because it makes the division and the conflict, of course. which right from the start was our problem. Yeah, that is when there is a division between a man and woman, mm. there's conflict. Mm. When there is a division between uh, Germany and England, there's conflict. Russia and so on, yes. so on, so on. And so all on. this is division within this consciousness itself. Therefore, and also the exercise of will upon consciousness is again the division within. So consciousness one has itself. to be free. Of the idea that through will you can change ah. content. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because that is important to understand. Yes, sir. This is very important. That the exercise of will is simply the tyranny of one fragment over some other. That's simple, sir. Yes. It's simple. Yes, sir. So, when one realizes that one has, one is free of will. Mm. Mm, then one is also. F- the free of this fragmentation. Yes, because every religion in the world has always called upon will, sir, to come in and do something. Yes, that's right. But we are so denying the whole of that, you see, sir. This is an enormous thing, sir, yes. So, fr- let's begin. What is a mind to do or not to do when it sees will is not the way, mm-hmm. when it sees all f- one fragment taking charge over other fragments is still fragmentation and therefore conflict, and s- and therefore still within the field of misery, then what is such a mind to do? Right? Yes, sir, this is really the question. Right. Well, now, for such a mind, is there anything to do? When you say that, sir, one says, if there's nothing to do, um, then the circus goes on. No, no, sir, look. The circus goes on only when, when there is the exercise of will. Are you saying, sir, that the very circus that we've been discussing, trying to change, is in fact made up of will? Made up my will against your will, ah, and so on and, and my on. will against another part of me. And so on. My desire to smoke. Sir, the, sir, sir, that's just it. Hmm? Right? Yes, sir. That is, a mind which says, who starts by saying, I must change, realizes one fragment asserting that it must change, is still in conflict with other fragments, which is part of consciousness. Yes, sir. Th- it realises that. Yes, sir. Therefore, it, it realizes also realises that, that will, e- to which man has become accustomed, which takes for granted that is the only way to bring about change, hmm, is not it the factor of is change. Not factor of change. Therefore, such a mind has come to a quite a different height. Yes, sir. It has cleared up a great deal. A vast quantity of rubbish. Yes. Which is, first it has cleared up. The division between the inner and the outer. Outer. The division between consciousness and its content. That's right. It has cleared up also the division between the the conscious entity and the consciousness belonging to him. That's right. Various fragments. Yes. And it has cleared up the division between different fragments in that consciousness. So what has so happened? So there is a great. What has happened to that mind that has seen all this? 
not theoretically, but I actually felt it. Uh, access um, says no more will in my life, which means no more resistance in my life. This is so extraordinary and so big, sir, that it's like finding the sky at the bottom one day. It's such a great change that uh, so it's very difficult to say what the extent of that change is. It is an enormous... So it has already taken place. That's y my point. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is so enormous that you one cannot assess the extent of that change. Sir. You are saying, sir, that there is no more will, there is no more effort, there is no, no more division between the outside and the inside, no therefore more everyone is responsible. No more fragmentation within consciousness. No more fragmentation. No, no more no, observer. No, that's very important to understand, sir. No more observer, no, separate from yes. his observer. Which means what? No fragmentation within consciousness. Yes, sir. Which means consciousness only exists when there is conflict between fragments. I'm not sure that this that we have understood this, sir. Well, consciousness what, is its fragments. Consciousness is its fragments, and consciousness is the battle between the fragments. Are you saying, sir, that they are only fragments because they battle? And when there is... When they are not battling together, they are not fragments. They are not fragments. Because they are not acting as parts. The, the acting of one part on another ceases. Is, ceases. That is what it means when you say fragmentation. Yeah. That's what fragmentation is. So see what, what has taken place, sir. So the fragments disappear when they are not acting against each other. Naturally. Yes. When Pakistan and India... Are no longer fighting. Fighting them. There is no more, more Pakistan and oh, India. India. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Of course, naturally, yes. sir. Yes, yeah. This is an enormous thing, sir. Are you saying, sir, that that is the change? Wait, wait, wait. I don't know yet. We'll, we yes. are going into it. So I am human mind which has realized this, that the, the world is me and I am the world. Yes. My consciousness is the consciousness of the world, and the world's consciousness is me. The content of the consciousness with all its misery, etc., so on, so on, is consciousness. Yes. And within that consciousness, there are thousand fragmentations. Yes. Sir. One fragment of those many fragments becomes the authority, yes. the censor, yes. the observer, the yes. examiner, the the thinker, the boss, the boss. Yes. And so he maintains fragmentation. Yes, see the, the see, see, see the important moment he assumes the authority, mm. he must maintain fragmentation. Yes, sir. Obviously. Because it's a part of consciousness acting on the rest of consciousness. Therefore, he must maintain conflict. Yes, sir. And conflict is, is consciousness. You have said that fragments are consciousness, sir. And... Are you saying now that fragments are, in fact, that content? Of course. Fragments are, fragments are conflict. Yeah. And when there's no I, fragment without conflict. Yeah. When, when is consciousness active? When it is in conflict. Of course, obviously. Yes, sir. Otherwise, uh, yes, sir. there's freedom. There's freedom to observe. Yes. Sir. So, radical revolution in... Or in consciousness and of consciousness takes place when there is no conflict at all. Thank you, sir.